Hello guys, and welcome back to the next part of the password tutorials. Today, what we're going to be covering is how to secure a item with an inventory for a password. And the last episode, what we worked on was the how to basically create a block with a very similar system. Now, I had to adjust the code a little bit in order to adapt it to allow item inventories to work properly. I'll cover how all that works still. I'll start from scratch just in case you haven't been following the series. First thing, uh, we have the item in our hand right now. So this is the item. Uh, when we right click on it, or if it's a brand new crafted item, it's going to ask us to set the password. So I'm just going to set it to one, two, three, four, five, just for demonstration purposes. We're going to click the button and then it's going to tell us the password in the chat here. After that, we can open it up and we can basically put our valuables in here. And if we right click on it again without clicking the lock button, it'll just uh, keep it unlocked and we can basically quickly access it. If we want to lock it, we can lock the item itself. I highly recommend knowing the password or having it written down in a text document so you don't forget it. <laughs> because once it's locked, you need the password in order to unlock it. So if we go one, two, three, four, and just leave out five, it's going to say it's the wrong password. So you're going to have a really hard time getting in if you don't know the password. And it supports characters, numbers, all these other things. You can set any password to whatever you want. So the more difficult you make it, the harder it's going to be to access your 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 bag. So if we type one two three four five and then unlock, we unlock it. We have the item still. So let's go through the Nether and just see that it basically works, and we can actually access our uh, bag with the variables and stuff. We can also lock it and it's, go back through and we're going to have it still locked so if we try unlocking it we'll be able to still have our items so that's basically how the uh, physical item bag works let's go into m creator and i'll show you how it all works all right so we have a couple different elements three guis and four procedures as well as one item so i'll be covering all these uh today the first thing that you're going to need is the secure bag inventory, which is, you can call it whatever you want, but it's the inventory for the actual item. We're going to need to create that first. Uh, I have created a simple inventory with one button to lock it and 27 slots for actual inventory space. You can do whatever you want with your inventory, however you want to do use the space for it. What we're just using this particular bag is just for extra inventory space that can secure things. Now, there's a couple other text things in here. It doesn't really matter too much. There's no extra properties other than the drop items when GUI is not bound to a specific inventory or when it's closed. So that's the only thing that's enabled. All the slots are the same. So that's basically just the default settings. All right, so after you've created that, what you need to do is create your item, select your texture, set any properties that you want, and then you need to select the GUI for the inventory for the item. And then what you need to do is set your slots to the amount of slots that you have. So one slot is equal to one value in here. And this is basically the number that you're going to allow for how many items can stack in that particular slot. After that, what you want to do is create a event or trigger for when the block is right clicked. Uh, I would just make it a very generic name, so right clicked, and then you're going to use it both for both the right clicked on block and right clicked on air. Uh, to do that, just create, click the plus icon here and then create the procedure. In that particular procedure, what we're doing is a few different things. The first thing that we're doing is we're testing for the entity's main hand item and if it's equal to the bag itself. Now you might need to actually compile the item first before you can actually select your item. So you might need to do that first, after which uh, you can set up this procedure. So when you have that part set up, what you need to do is 
test if the item in the main hand of the current entity has a MBT tag of has password and if this is equal to true. If that is false, then what we're doing is we're basically opening the set password screen, which I'll cover in just a second. If the item does have a password, if it's set to true, then what we're doing is we're testing if it's locked. Now, if it's locked, what we're doing is we're going to open the lock screen, which allows us to log into our item. Basically, to set this up, I will cover that right now. What you need to do is create a if statement, and then you need to go to logic and then grab a red operator. And then what you need to do is go to entity data, scroll down until you see item in main hand, and you're gonna drop that right there. And then you're gonna to go to Minecraft components, grab a red block like this, and then you're gonna select your item. And then what you need to do inside that procedure is create a, another if statement with a else statement. So we're gonna to go to flow control, grab this one right here, drop that right there. And then what we're going to do is go to logic, grab a light blue operator, and then we're gonna go back to logic, grab a true statement. And then what we're going to do is go to item procedures, scroll down until we get to get MBT tag, and then the tag name of, and then provide an item stack. And then we're gonna drop that right here. Now I suggest having your mod ID and then have your tag name followed by it. This makes it cross mod support so it doesn't conflict with any other mods with the, the same tag names. Now after that, you wanna delete your provided item stack right here, and then you're gonna drop, cop, duplicate the um, item in main hand of provided entity, and then you're just gonna drop that right there. After you've done that, what you need to do is duplicate this, and you're gonna place that right in the upper part of the condition. So it's like so and then you're gonna get rid of the else statement. So it's like this. You can do that by clicking on the gear icon and then moving over the else statement to the side. After that, make sure that you've created a new MBT tag called lock enabled. And what you're gonna do is basically test if this is true as well. After which you can go to player procedures, scroll down and grab open screen and we're going to get into these two particular screens in just a second. The first one that you wanna do is if the item is locked, if the lock is enabled, then you want to basically open the lock screen. And the other one, you want to open up the set password screen. So it's like that. So let's move on to the next few procedures. So we're gonna look at the lock screen now and our lock screen has a basic text field, which the text field has the text field input as password, all lowercase, and it has a internal text as password to show that, to let people know what the text field is for. And the rest is just an unlock button, which goes to the unlock button procedure. And the other one is our set password, very similar GUI. The same thing for the text field, which is password. And the only difference is the internal text says set to password. And the button for the set password goes to set password button. So once you have these two GUIs set up, you'll be able to continue the right click event and finish that procedure off. We're gonna take a look at the lock screen, which is under, or the lock button procedure, which is under the actual inventory now. So let's open this up and I'll show you what this all does. The first thing that we need to do is test for the item in main hand of provided entity. And we're gonna test for our actual item that we're basically wanting to lock. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the, MBT tag for that provided item lock enabled and we're going to set this to true and then we're going to close the GUI and set send the player a message saying the bag has been locked and that's all there is to it so again the first part I'm going to go to flow control grab an if statement go to logic 
grab a red operator and then you're going to go minecraft components grab that select your bag and then you're going to go to entity scroll down until you see item in main hand drop that there and then what we need to do is go to item procedures and scroll down until you see set mbt logic tag and we're going to drop that right there and then we're going to set our logic tag to the one that we've set in the previous procedure after which we need to close the gui so we're going to go to player procedures close G close any gui open for and then provide an entity and then again under player procedures what we can do is scroll down and send the player a message to let them know that they have locked the actual item so that's how that one's set up uh, moving on to the unlocked button now this is for the lock screen so this screen right here unlock and what we're going to be doing is basically unlocking the device so what we need to do again is the basically test for the item in the main hand of the provided entity I've covered that twice how to do that then what we need to do is basically I'm just going to start from scratch so what we're going to do is get the text field input so we know the text field id is password so we're going to do that but we need a logic get string we're also going to get a if statement which is, has an else statement like so we're going to place that right here and then what we're going to do is go and grab a item and then we're going to scroll down and we're going to get mbt text tag and then we're going to drop that right here we're going to get rid of the provided item stack and we're going to duplicate item in main hand place that right here and then what we're going to do is just move this over to the other side right here and we're going to go to slot and gui procedures we're going to get a text field inside or get text inside text field we're going to set this to our text field name so pass word and then what we need to do is move on to the next step so if the password is not equal to our stored mbt tag for our password which we haven't set yet but if that's not equal to the same thing that is stored in the actual item then what we want to do is close the GUI and then we want to send the send a message to the player letting the, them know it's the wrong password if it is the correct password then what we want to do is we want to set the mbt tag lock enabled to false and then we want to close the gui and that's important because if you open up the gui directly from this point without actually allowing it to go through the main procedure when it's being right clicked on then it's not going to allow people to store the actual items in and lastly we just want to let people know that the the item has been unlocked so that's basically all that is happening in this particular procedure the last procedure is for the set password which is this button right here again our password text field is called password and our button points to the procedure that we'll be covering right now so when we're actually setting the password we're doing a few different things first thing that we're doing is we are getting the item in the player's main hand and then what we need to do is we need to set the text field tag our password mbt tag equal to the text field in the uh, the text in the text field that is currently open in the GUI so what we're going to do is we're going to set a text field uh, mbt tag so we're going to go to item procedures text field or mbt tag set mbt tag and then we're going to set this to our password mbt tag and we're going to delete this part and we're going to delete that part we're going to set our item to item in main hand and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to GUI procedures get text field name set this to our text field name in our um, set password GUI so password and then what we need to do is go back to item procedures scroll down grab a logic tag and then we're going to set has password and this needs to be set to true 
And then what we're going to do is set the locked enabled, and then we're going to set this to false. And then what we want to do is basically print out the password to the player. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is go to player procedures, scroll down to the bottom here, where it says send message. And then we're going to just move that out of the way. And then we're going to go to text, create text with, and then we're gonna click on the gear icon, drag that over here. And then we have three options to basically place text in. We're just going to say bag has password of, and then we're gonna do a comma and, or a quotation, pardon me. And then we're going to do just an ending quotation. And then what we want to do is get the text from the stored MBT tag. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to item procedures, scroll down, get text MBT tag from the provided item. We're gonna delete this. We're going to also update these two pers uh, these two items and we're just going to set all three of these to our item in main hand so it's like so and we just need to set the tag name for the item to our password and you're good to go so that's all there is to it uh, if you have any questions or comments uh, feel free to ask the community in the comment section and i will start working on the last particular example for entities in the next tutorial and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.